It's exciting to be here. I mean, this is an amazing event, and I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you about, first of all, how KAUST, what KAUST is to begin with, and then how KAUST is addressing cybersecurity, especially in the context of the developments and the advancements in AI. So for those that don't know anything about KAUST, I have to talk about KAUST first because that provides significant context to what we're going to be talking about. So where is KAUST? KAUST is about an hour's drive north of Jeddah. Uh, it's along the Red Sea coast. KAUST was built about 14 years ago. It was intended to be like the Stanford, the MIT, the Caltech of the Middle East. It was set up to be a graduate-only research university, and it has some of the most advanced capabilities in the world, and I'll talk about that here. So, first of all, when KAUST was built, it was built as a university surrounded by a city and an adjacent research park. So, the ecosystem is much more than a university setting. It is, uh, like I said, an entire city. Now, one of the unique things about KAUST, we are not part of the global rankings that you would find, like US News World Report, Financial Times, because we do not have undergraduate students. We only have masters, PhDs, postdocs, researchers. But if we were to put ourselves in various categories of the rankings that are out there, QS World University Rankings ranks us number one in the world for citations per faculty member. We have some of the most re renowned researchers and faculty members uh, from around the globe, and we focus just on science and technology. Now, in addition to that, one of the things that we have that attracts some of the best talent in the world is we have core laboratory facilities, and I'll talk about that in a minute here as well. We have the most, one of the most uh, powerful supercomputers in the world to provide the support to our researchers to do the work they're doing. And then we have the broader community to be able to live, work, and play in this ecosystem. Now, what is the KAUST Innovation Ecosystem? It includes, like I said, the core laboratories. It includes uh, world-class connectivity across the entire campus and across the world. It also includes uh, research vessels to do work in the uh, research in the Red Sea. And so we have research, we have academics, and we have the community, and then we have uh, our core laboratories and education facilities. Our focus is to see how we can address world problems related to water, energy, food, health, environment, and digital. With that, we have like I said, some of the most advanced capabilities in the world to do that research. Now, we have a very highly advanced technology infrastructure. Having been built about 14 years ago, we have a very robust infrastructure that includes fiber optic cable to every home. So we have almost 4,000 homes. We have adjacent to the, research, to the university of a research park. Uh, with research centers from some of the Fortune 500 companies. We're kind of like the Stanford next to Palo Alto, right on the, uh, the west coast of Saudi Arabia. Now, with that, that gives us a unique capability to be able to do cutting edge innovation across, not only in the academic setting, and the research setting, but also in the broader community. So, we, look, we have a program we kicked off a few years ago called CalSmart. CalSmart looks at this community, this broader ecosystem, and it says, let's figure out how to leverage it for smart city digital innovation. Since we have some of the top researchers in the world, they are developing technologies in the laboratories and they would like to spin it off and be able to create a prototype. We can use the broader community as a test bed for these technologies. So with CalSmart, we've done various pilots. We do, when you come to this ecosystem, you'll see autonomous cars, you'll see autonomous shuttles, you'll see drone delivery, you'll see smart home. We've actually gutted one of our homes, we built it from the bottom up to be able to do everything from be as close to carbon neutral as possible by geothermal wells, solar panels. Uh, we even have a drone rec uh, receiving receptacle on the roof to be able to receive packages and it brings it down in an elevator into the home. The home is outfitted with technology from end to end, uh, from the kitchen appliances to the bedrooms to the entertainment rooms. It is highly advanced. 
We actually bring in technology from our startup community to actually outfit this, this home, and we use it as a test bed and as a, uh, to go through multiple iterations and figure out how we can actually take these technologies and spread them and scale them up even broader. That is part of the overall community, but this entire city is a living laboratory. We have a K through 12 school system. We have various roads and, 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 and you know, everything from shopping centers to grocery stores to restaurants and a broader community. So everyone that's in CALS has chosen to come to CALS to be part of this innovation ecosystem. So that means we can do these experiments and get feedback from the community and go through multiple iterations to fine tune it and see if it's a product or a service or solution that we could spin out uh, as a startup company or license it, license it to bigger companies. So what does that mean for cybersecurity? You know, first of all, everything that we build, we do in collaboration, both within Saudi Arabia and around the world. So we have, you know, some very prestigious collaborative partners. They see CALS as this living laboratory and they want to work with us to be able to develop technologies and then take it and scale it up even further. But for us to be able to do this, we have to understand how to build security into the design. It needs to be a core principle. Now, we're dealing with what I call a global arms race. So how do you innovate when you're constantly having to battle, not just you know, making sure the technology works, but it cannot be manipulated by malicious actors. So, you know, trying to make sure that we focus on the triad, what are called, you know, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of systems, especially critical systems that we would like to ensure that are built in into the design of these new products and solutions. So as the CIO of CALS, I have to make sure that the basic technologies are functioning and they're working and they're available and they're confidential and they're, you know, uh, and the integrity is ensured. But at the same time, I have to allow for this innovation to occur. I have to allow people to be able to try things out, especially in the broader community when you talk about IoT, when you talk about what can we do with 5G? How can we support low latency interaction between like autonomous vehicles, autonomous drones? All of that ecosystem needs to be protected and it needs to be aware of what could potentially harm it, especially with malicious actors taking advantage of AI. So what I would like to talk about is how AI is being utilized to empower the bad guys. I look at, I divide up cybersecurity into several different categories. And to, for simplicity's sake, for today's talk, I wanna talk about the different elements from target selection so first of all, people have to find you. Now, AI can be used, especially if any of you are familiar with ChatGPT. You could use that tool to actually identify targets for you. So the reconnaissance, the identification of targets is easier for the bad guys. As a top research university, we are a big target, especially for anybody trying to steal high-end research and be able to take the data that we've actually worked on and built they want to siphon it away from us. So we need to make sure that we protect that, that intellectual property and those, those research data sets. So the bad guys have more capabilities now. AI makes their job much easier. When it comes to infiltration, now infiltration is getting access into the environment. Everybody is aware of phishing, you know, now. Phishing is on steroids now because people can use AI to generate very realistic, very specific spear phishing emails. They can do background uh, investigations to find out what would be the hook to be able to get people to click on these things. They can use uh, AI to be able to improve the look and feel of those emails, to be able to bypass uh, email filtering systems, and to be able to get into the inboxes of those that it's trying to manipulate malware generation. Now you can get AI to write the code for you. You know, you, you heard of in the last few years, script kiddies, now it's taken to a whole new level. With the ability of AI to be able to write malicious code uh, on the fly, you don't have to know anything, you just tell it what you want and it'll happen for you. So now this has increased the number of individuals that have the ability to be able to generate malware. Evasion, now once 
you know, malicious actors are in your environment, they've made it, gains and achieved access, how do they avoid detection? They can use AI to be able to go and uh, essentially disguise their activities, be able to make sure the malware is less noisy and can't be picked up by intrusion detection systems. So they've been empowered by this additional capability. So how do, I, how do you counter that? Now, like I said, AI is helping the bad guys, but AI also helps the good guys. AI helps with improved network traffic analysis, helps to improve threat intelligence so that we can understand where these threats are occurring, coming from. AI can help us with behavioral analysis and anomaly detection when it comes to those that are trying to assess the perimeter of our environment, to be able to see if we are a weak target. So we want to be able to mitigate those by leveraging AI to understand what the threats are and where they're coming so we can focus our resources. When it comes to infiltration, enhanced AI capabilities improve AI email filtering. They improve those, uh, you know, the ability to understand where these threats should be coming from and what they should look like. And then look at the behavior. So behavioral analysis, anomaly detection. Is this something that should be occurring? Does it go outside the norm? Do they have, have the ability to be able to um, identify whether or not it's going to generate uh, a, a malicious packet? So the next one, malware generation. So what we can do is we can do assessment of this by sandboxing it. Have an AI take a look at it and mimic a realistic environment using an AI generated uh, simulation, and then we can actually determine if it's going to trick the other AI, the bad guy AI, that's cr created this malware and be able to isolate it and prevent it from doing d damage in your environment. Now, evasion, and this is where, you know, everything about behavior analysis is taken to a whole new level. When you actually train your AI environment, the good guy environment, you can get a better idea of what is expected, what is normal behavior from your, all your users and determine if something is out of, you know, out of normal activity and then be able to focus in on it, zoom in on it and take uh, corrective action if needed. So AI is empowering the good guys just as it's empowering the bad guys. Now what I'm gonna talk about how this is built into our environment. Since we are dealing with a experimental platform as well. We have to figure out how to compartmentalize the space. So we're an entire city, we're a university, we're a community. Everybody at home has different needs, you know, as far as, you know, streaming entertainment, playing video games, but that's all part of our network. That's part of our ecosystem. But then we have our core research activities, our core academic uh, activities, in addition to our research park tenants. But then on top of that, the overlay is the broader environment in which we are experimenting with the Cal Smart program. And this is where we're introducing things like, you know, how do we improve autonomous vehicle uh, behavior and fleet management into the environment. So how can we leverage AI to be able to provide different rule sets for different parts of that ecosystem so that we can identify how the bad guys are man manipulating us? If we can solve these problems, then we can actually support moving the, the product out and taking it outside of CALS, and we can address how it was built into the product set and how, going forward, we can actually leverage AI to protect it. So I say always vigilant. So we don't go into kind of a design thinking process without thinking about how this could be manipulated by bad actors. and it's. I call it war gaming. You know, you, you go in there, you say, I want to do this. Well, how can it be uh, manipulated for malicious actors' purposes? So let's build that into the design. Let's figure out how we can go through this iterative process and kindly make sure that if we put measures in place, we understand what the countermeasures are. And over time, we can come up with a better product set, and better solutions that can be uh, scaled up outside of CALS. So CALS, like I said, is a living laboratory for digital innovation. Security and privacy has to be the top priority. Otherwise, we cannot take this further than KAUST itself. So with that, I'd like to wrap up my presentation and say thank you for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share with you what we're doing with KAUST and what KAUST is all about.
Thank you.